Today is a very exciting day at Dimitri's Garage. Not only will I be showing you this Gion Q2M wax that our friends at Carzilla were kind enough to send me, I'll also be unveiling my new 2.0 test suite. We're gonna change up visual appeal testing just slightly. We're gonna be doing a new way of slickness testing, although the math will stay the same and the scoring will stay the same. Furthermore, we'll be hitting the third generation of our UV testing, and this one I think is as definitive as this is gonna get. Finally, I have a whole new way of doing durability testing and a whole new scoring system for that. And of course, I am excited to test out the Gion Wax on the system as the first product we look at because it is a fluorine-based product and we've seen some very good potential out of those in paste waxes. Here's the pretty box that Gion QTM Wax came in, but I discovered a little issue when I opened it earlier. The paint on it is completely flaking off. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know what happened. It's a brand new bottle. The guys at Carzilla just sent me this. I'm gonna use this old dirty shop towel and I'll kinda just scrape all of it off because I don't want it on my hands. You get a neat little applicator. Unfortunately, the towel has some of that stuff on it. I'll see if I can shake it off. All right, I think I got the towel mostly clean. The 2.0 version of my application testing remains the same, except we're using the center square here now. The point scoring is still the same. You can get a negative 10, negative five, zero, five, and 10. A 10 product would essentially be the best in its category and a negative 10 would be the worst. So this product is a little like a deodorant stick. Now I'm applying the product pretty much like any other paste wax. We're gonna let it haze. It's been half an hour. It looks very hazy. Hope it's easy to wipe up. That's not bad at all. Not insanely easy, but I was a little scared when I saw how hazy it was. It does have a little tack to it, but you know, it reminds me a lot of these other fluorine based products. Don't let that initial tackiness and hazing scare you. Even if you apply a lot of product, this comes off very easily, especially for a fluorine based product. Let's pull up the tape and look at what we have. With the tape peeled, let's move on to visual appeal. And in the 2.0 version of my testing, visual appeal remains much the same. The scoring is still based on a negative 10 to positive 10 in steps of five, but we're gonna be doing a composite score with this red panel and a black panel. And the black panel I painted myself, I'm not a great painter, but I think it shows you the difference between a black and a red surface. Some products look better on red, some products look better on black, and it kind of lets us find out and average out. So I don't wanna say this product's, let's say a 10, but you put it on your black car and you don't like it as much, or vice versa. On the red panel, I think the product looks pretty fantastic. I'm pretty impressed. Let me try to find you a paint line here. Given the 8-bit color limitations of YouTube, it could be hard to show lines in the red paint. That's why I think the black panel may come through better. But there's definitely a line out here that I can see. Hopefully it's showing up in the middle of your monitor right now. It does look very good. On the red, I would maybe go even as far as saying it's a... 10. I hope you guys are able to see that there are two lines on this panel, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the right is the Gion Wax, and the left one is a different product I'm testing, but you can tell that one made the black panel a lot darker. It is definitely, I think, prettier on the left, and we'll get into that video later. That's gonna be a different product. But that is the Gion Wax right there. On the black, I'd probably give it a five. So I think composite score, Let's go with like a seven and a half here. Let's do the gloss testing. And for 2.0, we're gonna be doing it on the hood here. Instead of using my glass panel like we did in the past, we'll take 10 readings instead of the previous five on the hood. I have heard some of you guys out, there are some skeptics saying, hey, you know, the results always kind of come in bad for most products. Maybe it's because you're using the glass. I understand, we'll switch to the hood to make people feel more comfortable with the test. Unfortunately, because the hood is painted and not glass, it's less uniform, so the gloss readings move around a lot more. That's why we have to do more average readings. Here's the panel before we apply the product, and I just wanna show you some gloss readings, and you'll get a feel for how inconsistent the panel can be. However, when I've taken a ton of averages, it's coming out to the same 94 gloss units that we had on the glass panel. So we've got 95.5 over here, very highly polished. And I've been using the same Meguiar's Ultra Finishing Polish that I've always used. 94.3, got 93 right there. And it's kind of all over the place. 
I hope this gives you an idea of what the panel's like before the product is applied. The testing itself is gonna be the same. Points are gonna work the same way. For every unit gain, we'll give a point. For every unit lost, we'll take away a point. To make sure we're calibrated, it should read 104 at 20 degrees, and it does. So let's start over here. 92.3. Let's move one more. We got 91.8. Got 90.6 up there. Ooh, 88.8 .8 over here. Looks like 90.7. 91.4. Let's test on the back here. We've got 89.8, 91.4, 90.7. Actually, I saw 90.9 .9 earlier. I'll give it that. 92.7. And for our final reading, 90.5. We've got 909.5. The score is going to be 90.95. We're going to round up and call it 91. In our case, we lost three gloss units applying this product. It's very similar to what we were seeing with the glass panel. Most products are gonna notice a step down because as I've explained in the past, high gloss paint is difficult to bring up. Your paint should be in the 90s if your paint is in really good condition. If your paint is showing up in the 80s or even 70s, that paint is in bad condition or it's badly painted. All my cars are in the 90s. I need just one second of your time to tell you that I've partnered up with Carzilla to make this video today. I have an affiliate link to the product we're reviewing down below in the description, as well as some Amazon affiliate links to other tools and production gear used to make the video. If you purchase anything at either of those places site-wide, I'll receive a small commission at no cost to you that helps me run this channel. And as always, if you're enjoying the video, do remember to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and please leave me a nice comment because I love talking to you most of all. Moving on to slickness, in the 2.0 suite of tests, we're gonna be doing almost the same thing as before with the only change being that we'll use this new panel here on the workbench. I've applied the Gion Wax on the side, and then we have a different product we're testing over here for a later video. The math to measure the static coefficient of friction and score points is gonna be the same. If you wanna learn more about it, there will be a video in your top corner up here. For now, let's get our five readings. 200 grams. 240 grams. 260 grams. 250, 250 again. Now to work out the static coefficient of friction, we're gonna divide this by five to average the five readings. So 240 grams is our average. And then we will divide that by 1,040, which is the weight of our block. And that means the static coefficient of friction is 0.23. This panel has the same 0.38 static coefficient of friction when it's been polished. So we're gonna take 0.38, minus 0.23, our delta is 0.15. And we've been using a 30 point score multiplier, which gives us 4.5 points as the score on the Gion Wax. It is slick, it's not very slick. This machine does UV weathering. So there are two bulbs inside here that are UVA 340 bulbs. They simulate outdoor UV in direct sunlight. And that means this machine can simulate months or even years of UV exposure. And I'll show you the basics of the machine. Over here, you have a counter and you can set this to minutes. You can set this to hours. In our case, let's start with 24 hours. This counter is going to read out the running time. This button controls the overall power. If we kick both lights off and kick on the timer, the timer now runs. And let's say if we set this to seconds, the timer would start counting seconds and it would stop at 24 seconds and turn the two lights out. There we go, the machine turned off. Change seconds to hours. So we're gonna run for a full day. As you can tell, we have multiple products being tested here, including the one we're looking at today. Those products themselves have been applied to these microscopy slides. I have these neat little plastic slides that I've painted in orange paint. We know that UVA is not significantly blocked by glass. UVB and UVC are blocked by glass. Here you see one that's labeled control and it has a piece of glass over it with nothing on it. That is a slide that has not been treated with anything, no clear coat, nothing like that. And that slide is just to see how much the glass takes away from our normal UV. We also have this one labeled dark. This is another control that's gonna go in a dark box in a cool, dry place, so it's not gonna be affected by UV. 
This slide here has been clear coated and it's also gonna go in a dark box. Over here, we have a clear coated slide with no glass on top of it. So the idea here is we'll be able to tell what difference, if any, these products make. We're gonna blast these with UV for 24 hours at a time and see how they look. Once we see a big result, we'll know if the products are working. With the door open, we're gonna take our samples carefully and the tray goes as far back as it goes and that'll get it lined up with the lights. All we gotta do now is wait. It's been 24 hours, the machine shut itself off when the counter reached the limit and I'm kind of curious if we've already got a result. So let's pop this thing open together and see what we got. I'm gonna try not to mess all this up. Here are our two dark samples. That's the clear coated one, that's the uncoated one. You can see they still look pretty much the same. As you can see, I've moved the samples on top of their respective slides so we can get a better idea of what they look like. And the sample that says dark, just to remind you, is the one that didn't see any UV exposure. And as you can see, it's so much brighter. It still has that bright orange pigment compared to everything else. Everything else is looking dull because it's been exposed to UV. And I'm not seeing any real variation in anything. There's a little variance from the way I sprayed because I'm not great at painting. This is our control that had no glass over it. And again, it's all roughly the exact same thing doesn't make any difference. Here we have the control that sat under the glass just to see what difference glass made. And we can tell that glass really didn't make any difference as far as UVA. UVA goes through glass very well. UVA represents the bulk of what we get from the sun on the planet. Now we have our control clear coated slide that sat in the dark and our clear coated control slide that did not sit in the dark that got exposed to UV and as you can see, even the clear coat could not beat the UV. When comparing the Gion Wax to our dark sample that never experienced UV, we can tell just how much was lost in terms of pigment and color. Putting it up against the control, they look pretty much the same to me, maybe a small difference in how I sprayed it. And then when we compare it to the clear coated slide that did experience UV, we can tell the clear coat was able to maintain more of the pigment, although it did see wear as well. When we look at all the samples as a group, we can really tell they all look the same. The controls look the same as all the ones protected by that slide in our test. The only difference is the clear coat. The clear coat compared to the clear coat that did not get blasted by UV was able to retain a lot more of the color. You're probably wondering, well, why do I see cars that are so pretty, even if they're old, because the owner's been really taking care of them and waxing them all the time. If somebody never takes their car for a wash and lets all the dirt, grime, salt, debris, bird droppings, insects, everything just bake into the paint, you can ruin paint in just a few years. It doesn't even have to have any UV exposure. In fact, ask yourself, why is it that people like cars from the South? The reason Southern cars that have been well cared for look better is because our environments have a lot less factors in them. We don't have as much of a winter. We don't have all the road grime in the winter. We don't have salt on our roads. Despite us having massive UV exposure, our cars still end up looking better when they're washed and waxed and all that good stuff. But you have all kinds of other stuff that can damage the paint. Furthermore, UV can boost oxidation of other substances that can damage your paint. As an example, if you take bleach and you put something painted in that bleach, the bleach will eventually bleach it. You take that jar of bleach with the item in it and you put it outside in the sunlight, it'll bleach it like that. It'll be very quick. What these products really do is not directly block UV. What they do is help protect your clear coat. They provide a layer that can help keep water off the clear coat. They keep other dirt and grime off the clear coat. And like I said, water and some of those other things can be more effective when UV is on them as an agent to damage surfaces. So by keeping water off, it has that UV protective quality. However, they themselves are not blocking UV. They're just keeping stuff off your clear coat. This is why it can be a mistake to use these as UV protective products without a clear coat. I see people doing this all the time. They polish their headlights and they rub off the protective layer on the headlights and then they apply a coating or a wax and wonder why they're yellow again. No, you need a clear coat on there first and then you need a product like this to protect the clear coat. That's what these do. I will keep doing these tests in the future just to see if we ever find a product that somehow does block UV. It's time we do the durability testing. And if you've watched my older videos, you're probably wondering why I'm not outside to do this. And that's because in the 2.0 suite, we're gonna be using this ohmmeter in order to do the durability testing. Essentially, it is a mechanized machine that's gonna sweep back and forth 
and it's gonna provide lubrication as it goes. It has a counter, it has a way of controlling the RPMs, and it's able to deliver a more consistent method of testing durability. The best part is I can do two samples at once and it is much, much quicker because we're gonna be doing about 30 passes per minute. The scoring is going to change a little and I'll post something in your screen here to show you what it looks like, but essentially we're gonna do 10 passes, 20 passes, 50 passes, 100 passes, 300 passes, and 1,000 passes. If something can break 1,000 passes, it will be considered exceptional, and it'll get our highest score with 10 points. This will also normalize our scores a bit so that no product is really getting insanely huge point numbers based on high durability. And the reason is that high durability is becoming more and more of a standard. Before we start the durability test, let's check out the hydrophobicity of our product, and the Gion Wax is right here on the left. That hydrophobicity looks pretty good to me. Now that we've looked at the hydrophobicity to do our testing, we're gonna place the plate right here. Make sure we're not covering up the drain hole. And we're gonna give it some lubricity. This is just the Atom shampoo we've used before. I just wanna pre-lube a little bit here. We've got the water we're gonna use and more of the Atom shampoo, and I'm gonna dump 50 milliliters into the water, and that's gonna be our base solution that we're gonna run the test with. For this test, I'm using these cool little applicator sponges. It's nice because I can get packs of them and they're kind of a consistent way to test. We'll use the red sides and we'll pre-lube these really good. And there's the first one for the other product we're testing today. Here's our other pre-lube sponge. Now we can install these little retainers. We're gonna give our shampoo solution a good mix until it's all dissolved. And we'll take these sponges off for a second. I just wanted to show you how they stick on. And we're gonna put these into the bottle of shampoo. So right now our machine's set for 500 washes, but we don't want that. Let's set it to 50. And now if we hit the go button, you see, this is how the machine operates. But right now, obviously I don't have the sponges installed, so it's not doing any scrubbing. We did pre-lube, but I wanna see that lube come through the lines because the lines otherwise have water in them from when I blow them out so that the shampoo doesn't get all stuck in there and gummed up. My buddy Shelby helped me 3D print these plastic black pieces at the top. There we go, the machine stopped and we could see it's already started leaving a little slick here. And that is very slick actually, very, very slick. So we can pick it up now and we can attach our sponges which we've already pre-lubed. Now let's set the machine for 10 washes. And we'll do our first batch of 10 and see if these products survive 10. And you see we're going right at 30 RPM under load when the sponges are in, it's creating friction. The machine's done its first 10. Let's see if our product still works. Let's first rinse. Let's take a look at the Gion Wax. That's still working really great. Got the plate back in, squirt it a little. Let's install our little retainers. One thing I failed to mention earlier is that these panels are made with ABS plastic, just like some automotive body parts. They were sanded, primed, painted, and cleared with automotive clear coat by me. And we'll do 10 more for a count of 20. 20 in, let's see how the Gion Wax performs. And we can see we're starting to develop a little wear pattern right here where the brush has been going, but there's still tons of life left in this, so it's past the 20 wash mark. And now we will bump this to 30 passes to get us to 50 total. Let's do it. Now let's take a look at the Gion Wax. Barely holding in. Let's take it to 100 and see if we see any result. All right, we've got 50 dialed in here. Let's take it to the 100th pass.
Now let's take a look and see if it's still doing anything. <laughs> With the big line there, you can tell at this point it's worse than the control. And the reason it's worse than the control is because the control was polished clear coat and here we've been scrubbing this, it's so tacky now, this is much smoother. So now we're actually getting worse performance. So 50 was the limit on this, it didn't make it to 100. So we're gonna call this good. Now that you've seen our new test suite, let's talk about the performance of the Gion Wax. Let's start with the good stuff. I thought the durability was good. It survived 50 washes and it was really on its last legs. It did not make it to the 100. We saw that at that point we were scuffing up the clear coat but that's great for a simple to use paste wax. I also thought the product was relatively pretty. It looked good on the red paint. On the black, I think it didn't add quite enough pop. Some formulations just don't always look amazing on all types of paint. As far as ease of application, being a fluorine product and compared to other similar products, I thought that this was fairly easy to remove. Remember when we talk about ease of application, it is subjective and I am also comparing to its category. Now let's move on to things that didn't score particularly well. So for one, our gloss testing, we did see a reduction. However, as I've said in the past, this is fairly normal. Almost all products on such a shiny painted surface are not just gonna boost it to a higher gloss level. The slickness is another area that I think can be improved. The product just wasn't that slick. Slickness can be important when you're cleaning the surface. It helps glide off and not scratch into it. For the new UV test, as we saw, there's just no difference compared to other products. There's no difference compared to the control. And that's totally normal. None of the products I've ever tested have ever performed in any of my tests. The only thing I've ever seen work was clear coat, PPA, and actually me taking sunscreen and applying that, that did work. So would I use and recommend this product? I think yes. If you're into paste waxes, I think the combination of ease of application, durability, accessibility, because Gian is a big brand so you can shop it at a lot of places, and kind of being one of those cool fluorine based products, I think it's quite interesting and worth giving a shot if pastes are your thing. If you've enjoyed this video and seeing the new test suite, do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make sure to ring the bell so you get notifications. And I would love to talk to you down below in the comments. I love interacting with everyone. If you're new to my channel, I do car detailing videos as well as car mod videos. There's something here for basically any car person. So I hope to see you again really soon in a future video.